Good morning, Congressman. How you doing? Jim, uh, doing fine. I hope you are as well. Well, we're going to try and hunker down this weekend with the weather uh, moving in. First off, um, Biden administration working with a bipartisan group of senators to strike a deal on an international aid package that includes reforms to stop a surge of illegal immigration. Uh, there's now a push to raise the standards for asylum while granting work permits to those who will likely qualify. Uh, your stand on illegal immigration, well known. Um, how do you see this playing out? Well, I'm glad to hear he's finally recognizing that the American people are deeply concerned about the insecure border. In fact, it, it right now, in most polling, it's the number one issue of concern across the country. And uh, I think uh, our holding the line here in the House and saying, um, while we want to be involved in supporting Israel, and uh, in fact, we've sent funding for Israel, we want to continue uh, doing support with allies for defeating Putin in Ukraine. We're not going to do that unless we secure our border first. And uh, there's no way that you can, um, with a straight face, say that the border is secure. And uh, Mayorkas, your uh, your uh, Homeland Security Secretary, is uh, up for potential impeachment now because a number of things have lied to Congress about the security of the border, etc. So uh, to hear the president is now making some noises about working with a bipartisan group of senators and House members to come up with a solution, that's great. But he needs to remember um, that it must be uh, border security coming very close to H.R. 2, which we passed twice already, one with the Israeli aid uh, package as well, that we know works because it worked during the Trump administration and we had a secure border. So we'll see what happens, but I'm, uh, I'm appreciative that he has at least heard enough to say, well, uh, I, I may need to jump in and work toward a solution with the members of Congress. And things heating up overseas, Russia condemning the United States and Britain after military strikes in Yemen. The air and sea strikes were against the Iran-backed rebels in Yemen. I believe it's pronounced uh, Houthi rebels. U.S. called it part of an international effort to restore the free flow of trade in the Red Sea. Russia has called for an urgent United Nations meeting to discuss the issue. Of course, as we all know, this is the same country that invaded Ukraine a few years ago. Uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, air and sea strikes against those rebels in Yemen there, Congressman? Well, I'm fully supportive of it. I'm glad that uh, the president did finally jump on this one, and I'm glad it was done in an allied effort with Great Britain. I think that's what ought to be our continued process uh, in any region of the world, uh, that we expect that our allies will be there with us. I think the same would be true with the energy issues that we work with allies to push back against uh, Russia and others uh, that uh, would hold us hostage for various reasons. So um, the, the Houthis have been um, committing atrocities. They've been um, shooting at, uh, at commercial ships. They've taken a, a, a pirated a commercial ship that they still hold on to, and that's, that's Japanese flag. Uh, this is a key area of commerce. Uh, shipping lanes that go through there, and it's about time we did something. Um, they have attacked in the past uh, several weeks uh, 27 times on either our ships or commercial ships, and uh, I, I hope that what was done last night was done in a very powerful way, taking out um, assets that the Houthis have used, um, launch systems, uh, tracking systems, um, and we know that it's attached completely to Iran. And Jim, remember, in, in, the, in this world situation going on right now, if, if something pops up in, in Ukraine or pops up in Israel or pops up uh, in China, it's a, it's a uh, compilation of allies. Uh, they are uh, not friendly allies publicly, but behind the scenes, it's China, Iran, Russia, North Korea, all are there. And then satellite actors like the Houthis or Hamas doing what they're doing. So um, it's good when we have allied effort, and hopefully last night's 
um, punch back that uh, was delayed for quite some time with over 100 attacks on our, even on our troops within the last couple of months that have really not been, been addressed. Last night sounded like that was a pretty, pretty tough response, and hopefully it'll have results. All right, uh, 2024, obviously a big political year. I saw something this morning from the folks at Gallup I find kind of interesting. Political independents continue to constitute the largest political bloc in the U.S., with an average of 43% of U.S. adults identifying this way in 2023, tying the record high from 2024. Independent identification has been 40% or higher each year since 2011, according to Gallup, except for 2016 and 2020. Uh, 27% shares equally of U.S. adults identify as Republicans and Democrats with the Democratic figure making a new low for that party in Gallup's trend. So with this information from Gallup, uh, you know, we have the two major political uh, candidates this year and an independent as Robert Kennedy Jr. wants to run as an independent. If so many people are calling themselves independent, does uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. have a chance to perhaps mess things up in November? Well, um, we, he certainly could. Um, it remains to be seen. Uh, his message is a bit different than the progressive Democrat, but it's still a Democrat message. So I think in the end, when the campaigns heat up, started, um, people will be looking at more the individual themselves. Uh, if, uh, you've probably heard me say in the past, I'm Washingtonian. Uh, if I had my druthers, we would have never had political parties. Uh, Washington said it would be the ruination of America. Uh, <laughs> I tend to think he's right. I'd rather that people voted for me because I'm a conservative. I believe in limited government. I believe that uh, people ought to control the government, and I believe that uh, the power ought to be as close to the people as possible, state and local authorities. So I'd rather that they vote that way. And hopefully, as even though I still think the parties will have, in the end, the biggest uh, vote count and the uh, biggest punch, uh, yet as people think independently, hopefully they'll think according to principles and policy. And uh, until we end the party system, which probably won't happen in my lifetime, until we end that, uh, they vote for the, the principles and the policies that make make an impact. Right now, you know, when the, when, uh, the majority are saying across this country that our border isn't secure, uh, that we ought to have energy independence, um, that uh, that we ought to have a government that is, is limited and has to reduce spending because of $34 trillion debt, um, hopefully... Um, cool heads will prevail when they go to the ballot box and they'll elect someone who actually can do and will do uh, what he or she says. In, in my case, I believe that we have a record with Donald Trump of, of policies that worked. And um, so I think uh, Kennedy or Biden have a, a significant uphill challenge uh, in this climate right now uh, to defeat uh, Donald Trump. And I think that's what I so much is being done uh, in the courts to try to, uh, to, fr to frustrate that from happening. All right, Congressman, we'll talk to you again next Friday morning at the same time. We'll stay above the uh, snowstorm, and uh, I look forward to getting back and at least being home when it happens. All right, good talking with you, Congressman. Have a good day. You too. That was uh, Michigan Republican Congressman Tim Wahlberg on AM 1590 and FM 95.5 WTVB.